Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 12649 Code Blooded from Minneapolis, Minnesota. They've had a fantastic season so far, only having two losses over three or four different league meets. They're gearing up for the Minnesota State Championship in a week or two, and they just have a really excellent robot. Great use of 3D printed parts, uh, TPU, PLA, a bunch of different materials, and I'm really excited to talk about this team and go into it on Behind the Box. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted at Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay guys, let's get started with your drivetrain. As far as the drivetrain goes, are there any uh, anything unique you think that you have going on that you really want to focus on? It's uh, just a mechanism drivetrain with uh, mechanism wheels. It's nothing too special. Mm -hmm. And so, no. yeah, as far as the... Um, programming behind the drivetrain goes for localization and things like that are you guys using like odometry just a motor encoder something else uh and like do you also work in your camera vision with that um we just use encoders for our drivetrain and we don't really use cameras at all for that okay and so but do you use the camera like as far as the april tag goes or anything like that later in the autonomous period or is that something uh that you haven't really explored yet this season yeah, so we actually only use cameras in the autonomous mode. We don't involve them at all in our tele app. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, as far as the autonomous goes, how do you use them uh, with the April tags? So, basically, we line them up in a position where we can see all of the April tags. And then we select which one we want to go to and just basically move the robot, sending signals to the encoders to move the robot towards that April tag until we get our desired distance away. Awesome, yeah. And as far as competition performance goes, how has the success for that been? Uh, you know, you guys have had a lot of different competitions. I think I saw like three league meets and then you also have like a league championship. So, you know, plenty of matches to test these types of things out on. So how has that uh, performed in competition? Um, usually in the competition, we have to fine tune our like camera values a little bit since everywhere is different. But that's really the only hiccup we've had when we're using a competition. Awesome, yeah. I think another really uh, interesting aspect of your guys' robot is your intake. You know, you've done a lot of work on it and has a ton of different materials going on. So why don't we talk about that a little bit if we can see it from the front and you guys can just give us a walkthrough uh, at the beginning and then we'll dive deeper into it. Yeah, so our intake, we designed it from the back. So one, it can pick up off of the ground as well as off of the stack. Um, because it's so low to the ground and they're spinning um, parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. And so, so with this, you know, you mentioned this ability to pick pixels off the stack. Uh, you know, I, from my understanding, you guys mentioned you haven't done that in autonomous yet. But as far as teleop goes and matches, do you do you like taking pixels off of the intake stacks instead of going all the way over to the wings, or do you guys still typically go to the wing uh, to pick up pixels? We still typically go over the wing. I see. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, you know, with these with these flaps, I see they they look three D printed or cast. So, what material are they made out of? And did you guys have to do a lot of iterations to get them just right, or was it really like a one and done kind of thing? So these are three D printed in TPU, and we've gone through a few iterations just to get it fine tuned and make sure we can pick off the stack. Mm hmm. And uh, so how are they powered? Um, yeah, are you guys using motors or like one motor for both of them or different uh, actuators? Let's hear about that. There's two servos, one powering each of them. After you intake the pixel, where does it go into your robot? So it comes through a ramp in the robot and then it comes into what we call a pixel holder mm -hmm. and it holds two pixels next to each other. And we can hold two and then our claw and take the ground them score on the background. I see. And so I see you guys have additional wheels 
uh, inside the robot after the pixel initially comes in, the, the gray one. So are those also TPU or are they something else? Uh, you know, walk me through that. Yeah, yeah, so these wheels we designed, um, and these wheels, along with everything on our robot, has gone through a lot of iterations. They're actually TPU wheels, and they really help squeeze the um, pixel off the ramp, and they're all powered by one motor, which we use a gear drive chain for, mm -hmm. or a gear chain. Awesome, yeah. And so as far as sensors go or automations, do you guys have, uh, are you guys using any of that in, in the teleop or autonomous modes? Or really you just have done enough driver practice so far that adding those automations uh, isn't really necessary yet? Yeah, so one really nice thing we have is we have two color sensors in the front of our robot, which sense where the pixels are when we drop them. So we can tell when there's two pixels inside of our robot and we're going to have our intake reverse, so then we can't accidentally pick up that third pixel, which is a massive penalty. So that's one of our biggest sensors we use on. Awesome, yeah. And so now talking about your guys' um, claw and deposit system a little bit, let's start with the transfer. Once you have your pixels inside the robot, how do you pick them up uh, with the claw? And then we'll go on from there. So our claw comes down into like the pixel uh, folder, as we call it, and it's kind of indiv individual. There's one for the left side and one for the right side. We come down, we'll grab the pixels, and then we'll go up, and our four bar will come down to get us ready to score, and then we'll drop it to put it on the backdrop. Awesome, yeah. And so a couple questions I have for you guys there. I've noticed your Masumis are actually, I would say, in like the in a different orientation than I've seen most teams uh, placed in, you know, um, less like how drawer slides are placed in more flat. So was that like a, what, what was the reasoning behind that decision? You know, would you recommend other teams do the same or was it just kind of unique to your robot? Well, we have uh, like not much space to put these slides and mm -hmm. putting like this is really the only place we could put them. And since like the height, if we put them any higher, we would be exceeding 12 inches and not allow us to cross under the gate during mm -hmm. the playoff. Yeah, and how are your slides powered? You know, what motor are you using? Are you using one or two motors? You know, let's see, hear some of those details too. Yeah, so we have one motor in our back that actually powers both sides, uh, making sure they go up and down in unison. And we have an axle going through our robot that will um, power both sides. And then going back to the other question, the Masumis, we wanted them to be facing in this orientation because we wanted our robot to be very um, small, as small as we could, as well as under that 12 inch barrier so we can go through that middle zone um, easily being able to access the whole field. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. So now talking about your four bar mechanism itself, uh, was this the first design that you guys tried this season or did you try others? Uh, and then we can take a closer look at it a little bit. So on this robot at the earlier, we had a mechanism, just a claw without a four bar. And we ran into issues with us, like not always getting the pixel to drop on the board. Mm -hmm. So added a four bar mechanism that's mostly 3D printed to be able to yeah, push, get closer to the board and not run into those issues yet. Mm -hmm. And so how is your uh, four bar powered? Uh, it's powered by two rev servos. I see, I see. Yeah, and you know, another thing I wanna talk about with your guys' robot is your end game period. So as far as the drone is concerned, what are your capabilities? Uh, and then we can talk about how you got there. Yeah, so as we were testing our drone throughout the season, we went through many iterations starting off with a spring launch, um, a rubber band launcher, and we found that it was very inconsistent. So we switched off, if you can see from the top here, mm -hmm. we have a spring loaded in the middle of it, which really gives us consistency in our airplane launcher um, because it's the same amount of force each time. Awesome, yeah. And so now, like, are you guys consistently hitting that zone one drone, zone two? What are we looking at? Yeah, so when we shoot our airplane launcher, we go for right in between zone one and zone two to guarantee that we score. And most of the time it does actually bounce back into that zone one um, zone. So I'd say more than not, we're in zone one and otherwise we're in zone two. Awesome, yeah. And you know, the last question I have for you guys is about your hanging mechanism. So if you can walk us through that and then we can uh, you know, talk more about it. Yeah, so we have, when we were thinking about our hanging, um, this is a later iteration and we, have it so the servo will spring. Um, let me pause. We have it so the servo will spring out, and our hanging mechanism 
will spring loaded. It'll just spring up. And this allows us to be able to have our hanging mechanism at the height we need it in under a second. And one thing we love about this hanging mechanism is as the pole hits the string, it will actually self-close onto the, um, the pull-up mechanism. So then from here, we, can, we have it connected to a spool, and we can just um, pull the robot down. And originally, we tested with magnets, but we didn't like how they could fall off prematurely during the match. So we decided that with springs, we would have it so they would just um, bend it into place so they would never fall off the robot and the, the pull-up mechanism would just go down as we pull up. Awesome, yeah. And so now this pull-up mechanism that you've mentioned, is it? Uh, are you pulling up using a motor, a bunch of servos? How does that look? Just a bunch, uh, two motors, one okay. for each side. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And, you know, going into the Minnesota State Championship, looks like that's next week for you guys. Are there any plans you have to make changes to your robot or just game strategy in general? Uh, how is that looking? Just keep making sure our robot works and fine-tuning the autonomous. Yeah, awesome. we're thinking the biggest thing with our robot is we want it to be super consistent. So we're just going to keep fine-tuning, making sure our hanging is consistent, our... Um, our four bars consistent and just a lot of gyro practice and um, autonomous work. Awesome, yeah. So Team 12649, Code Blooded, thank you very much. I think you guys have really uh, done an excellent job with your robot. Very diverse use of uh, 3D printed parts and really effective use of springs and end game mechanisms and just an overall clean robot. So thank you so much for this interview. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas and this is Team 12649, Code Blooded. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.